Hello and welcome back everyone. So just like in real life, the main purpose of a bridge is to connect two sides or two halves of a side and unite them with the help of some sort of a connection so that there is a communication between the two sides. And today in this lecture, we will be looking into the different parts of a bridge that is used in prosthodontics. So bridges in prosthodontics also fulfill the same role of replacing a missing space that was once occupied by a tooth by bridging the gap between the natural teeth and filling the gap with the help of artificial teeth. So there are a few basic parts of a bridge that are used in every kind of bridge design. But if we want to understand the parts of any partial denture, we first need to understand what is an abutment. So abutment is any tooth to which the actual bridge is attached. Now it can also be a partial denture or any other kind of appliance that is attached to a tooth. And it is not necessary for the abutment to be a natural tooth. Sometimes we also use implants as an abutment in our design. But most often in partial dentures and also in fixed dentures, we use natural teeth for our abutment support. So abutment is a natural tooth that is prepared to receive the FPD or any other kind of prosthetic appliance. Preparing the abutment essentially involves leveling the crown and preparing it to have an effective bond with the appliance. So like I've said, abutment can also be an implant which in that case will be placed inside the bone. So abutment is not specifically a part of FPD because as I've already mentioned, it is a terminology that you will hear in almost all kinds of partial denture appliances and understanding the concept of abutment is hence important for any dentist. Therefore, I included a brief overview on what is an abutment. So the first very crucial part of the actual bridge is a retainer. So retainer is that part of the bridge that is cemented onto the abutment and it is responsible for receiving much of the occlusal load being applied onto the bridge. So the retainer basically goes over the abutment and hence makes a stable bond with the already prepared abutment and provides the support to the rest of the bridge. So next we have the pontic. So pontic is an artificial tooth that is going to replace the edentulous space. So as you can already see, it has no direct attachment to the abutment and relies on the retainer for the support and stability against the occlusal forces. And so to be effective in function, both the retainer and pontic need to have a connection between the two. And this connection is provided by the third part which is known as the connector. So the connector is the part that connects a pontic to a retainer. Or it can also connect two retainers to each other in a bridge that is having more than one retainer on one side. So connector is basically a joint connecting a pontic and a retainer or two retainers to each other. Now based on the connections, there can be a fixed fixed type of a bridge in which the connectors are totally immovable. Or they can also be a fixed movable type of a bridge in which one of the connectors allows some sort of movement. But let's leave the topic of different types of bridges for some other lecture. So in the end, we have the term unit. So unit is a term that can be used for either a retainer or for a pontic. It is basically a collective term for any bridge that tells us the number of units involved in that bridge. Like in this example, we have two retainers and one pontic. Therefore, this will be a three unit bridge. Similarly, there are also four unit bridges, five unit bridges, depending upon the number of retainers and pontic involved in the making of the bridge. So this was just a brief lecture on different parts of the bridge. Now in my further videos, I will be discussing in detail about these parts of the bridges and also different types of bridges that are used in prosthodontics. So I hope you like this video. Please take care of yourselves and I will see you people next time. Goodbye.